Welcome to our Tech Ed session, Navigate S4HANA Transformations with Lina X and BTP. It's a great honor for me to not only speak alone to you, but also with Andre Christ, founder of Lina X. So we'll hand over to him that Andre will give some ideas to you about how Lina X is working and what is the story about. Yeah, thank you, Thorsten, for inviting me to this session. It's actually my first ever SAP Tech Ed. And I'm really excited because, as some of you know, Lina X is going to become part of SAP um, in the future. So what I will do now is to share a little bit more about what Lina X is all about. The best way to compare Lina X is to compare it to navigation. As much as a city plan is simplifying how the world looks like and how you navigate through the traffic, that is what Lina X does for software and IT landscapes. We're today helping more than a thousand companies worldwide including Adidas, Bosch, Lufthansa, or Migros, in order to navigate their transformations in IT. A year ago, Linux has become an SAP endorsed app, meaning it can be purchased, for example, through the SAP App Store. But let me explain a little bit deeper what this is all about. Navigation sometimes means you need to translate between what the penthouse wants and the engine room. Let me unpack this. There's often strategies which are being made, for example, going into a new sales channel or introducing a new product. So these are all business strategies often made way up in the penthouse. But then there's the engine room, people who are supposed to actually translate this into software and technology. The difficulties is that there's often a gap between those two worlds and it needs people who translate between this. This is where architects come in. And this analogy of the architecture elevator helps a lot to understand what Linux is all about. SAP Signavio helps companies in managing their business processes. So understanding how the work is flowing through the company. There's other products, for example, ServiceNow, which help to reflect the real world in the infrastructure. Linux sits in the middle, translating between those two worlds and helping companies, for example, in modernizing their application landscapes, in reducing technology debt, in navigating their ERP transformation, harmonizing their landscapes. So for example, after a merger or when a carve out is happening or to further adopt software as a service in landscapes. So this is where the sweet spot of Linux is. Now I'd like to share with you two key processes where architecture management comes into play. The first one is deriving the business strategy and from there going to the IT execution. So this is for us an essential process because people often ask, well, how do you translate now between the two worlds? And it starts with the capabilities. So it's all around mapping out what is needed to support the business. But the important piece is actually not stop there. It's about understanding what are capabilities which drive forward innovation which of those capabilities need differentiated processes and which of those are more commodity. From here, you can then actually derive a functional and a technical fit. So understanding how well are your systems set up. This results in a portfolio assessment. So really understanding how good is my application landscape in shape. By bringing all those insights together, now is the time to derive application roadmaps and plan forward how the modernization of the portfolio will look like. So you see, it is a very stepwise approach, which is guided through this whole journey. The second important process is going from the S is understanding to a 2B planning. So customers of Linux, what they do, they look, for example, at assessing the cloud migration status. So today we all know you no longer just want to lift and shift your applications into the cloud but you actually want to decide what you really need to do with the architecture. Is it all about re-hosting or is it really re-architecting those applications or even retiring before you do anything? So this is a fundamental activity which is supported by the AWS 6R method, which customers apply within Linux. Another angle to look at the current landscapes is to look at the tech obsolescence, meaning how long are the vendors actually still supporting the technology in the applications you're running? So for example, at one point in time, your operating system is actually going out of life or your database versions are going out of life. This is going to risk 
of course, that there are security issues, or you don't even get anybody who can support it anymore. And the problem you have is actually you need to know in advance. If you find out it's often too late to set up a project to replace the tech debt. So this is where a management of the tech obsolescence can come in, supported by LinaX, where LinaX brings, for example, software and hardware life cycles of the vendor so that you can understand when is something actually running out. Based on those assessments, then companies plan their application modernization. So really understanding what is my one-year plan looking like, which changes are we going to do in the architecture, and what is the longer-term strategic roadmap look like. So these are two of the fundamental processes companies do um, support it with enterprise architecture. Now, let's shift the angle a little bit to the topic of S4HANA transformations. As we all know, a big topic. We all know that transformation is a complex thing. So that's why we want to guide you a little bit through the process of like, how can it be broken down a bit more simplified? The first step is obviously looking at what is coming up as the big challenges. So really thoroughly understanding this. And what we see is that the consistent challenges are named year over year. And it's all around identifying dependencies, aligning across the business and IT project teams, defining a target state, and also making sure that the stakeholders are well informed by what's going on. We see that very, very consistent year over year. And this is where the help of enterprise architecture can actually kick in. This is where a fundamental concept comes in, which is if you have a complex challenge, it often makes sense to look at it from multiple angles. And here we're really excited to look back on our long-term partnership with SAP Signavio. Because if you want to navigate from the current state to the target state, it's not only one dimension you would look at, it's multiple dimensions. Why is that needed? Well, because complexity is often hidden like underneath the iceberg. Sometimes you know the number of processes, the number of applications, but do you really know what's actually their dependencies? How much data is kept in those systems? That is not often known to people. And this is where two disciplines work hand in hand together. The one is business process transformation, which is really well supported by SAP Signavio. The other is enterprise architecture management. So on the way from going from the IT complexity situation in the beginning to the target state, the knowledge about people, processes, capability, data, applications, and technology is fundamental. So this is charting the way to go to an intelligent and sustainable enterprise. This concept is not just a theory. It's something we've started 10 years ago where we came up with this idea, how can we integrate the business process discipline and the enterprise architecture management discipline? Today, it's a seamless integration between two products, LinaX and SAP Signavio. And there's a flow between them. So processes are being exported from SAP Signavio and imported into LinaX. And systems and other objects can be easily imported from LinaX into SAP Signavio. All you need is an API key to connect those two systems, and then you can configure this integration. So it's very, very seamless and easy. The benefit, of course, is being able to ask more questions to report differently. So for example, if you're going to sunset a process, which applications are going to be impacted by that? The other way round as well. If you're going to decommission an application, where would you have to look into your process landscape to change something in your processes? So this integration is incredibly useful to bring data from both sides to the people who really work on it in their environments. In light of the upcoming ERP transformations, we have thought about how can we best support this journey using the SAP Activate method. So just as a quick reminder, the SAP Activate method is all around discovering, preparing, exploring, realizing, deploying, and running the systems in the future. And so here, you might be familiar with how SAP Signavio does this. So achieving process transparency in the first step, supporting the business case creation, defining the target processes, implementing process improvements, collaborating with stakeholders once you implement them, and then in the end, set up a continuous improvement on the processes. With LinaX, we have mirrored this approach from a systems perspective. 
The first step is obviously achieving architecture transparency. And the beauty about this is it's not only about the SAP landscape, but of course also about all the non-SAP systems, which often companies do not get from their SAP environments. You do not get it from the Solman environment or Calm easily. So this is where LinaX really helps. The next step is figuring out the business case. Here, LinaX Insights can help to identify what needs to be invested in which systems to update them. Then it's all about defining the target architecture. So defining which systems are actually going out of life, which are going to be replaced by the S4HANA rollout. Based on that, a transformation rollout and roadmap can be created. And of course, in transformations we all know, it's crucial to track the progress. We all want to know if we are on the right path to realize all the benefits we had originally in the business case. And based on that, a continuous architecture improvement is needed because obviously, as you have the new landscape in place, that's not where we're going to stop. It goes on. New technology comes to the market. New capabilities are being deployed by SAP and, of course, also other vendors. So with this approach, we feel there's a great way to support companies step-by-step -step in their approach, both from a process perspective and from a systems perspective. But we also believe that this is not where it should stop. If we think about transformations, for us, it's always about three things. It's about processes, systems, and people. And the metrics to measure if we're actually successful are two things. How fast do we get insights? And how fast are we actually able to adapt? And of course, tool sets like SAP Signavio and LinaX will help a lot in gaining those insights to take the right decisions and not waste time in charting out stuff on PowerPoint or Excel, but really getting most out of the solutions in a data-driven way. And then going through this process by adapting the systems, it's all around, do we know what actually risks out, are out there? Which dependencies are out there early on? And this helps us to actually stay on a fast time to adapt. So we believe LinaX and SAP Signavio are an amazing combination and complementary and um, chart the way out. However, and this is why I'm so excited to have Torsten with me today, there's another area where we can be great with. It's integrating into the wider SAP ecosystem. And this is where Torsten is going to show the magic of integrating into the SAP BTP environment. So Torsten, I'm excited to see your demo soon. So let's go. Thanks a lot, Andre, for your insights, for your ideas, and for the story how LinaX and also Signavi is working together to support SAP transformations. I would like to give some insights how these ideas and the power of LinaX can be used for SAP transformations. As you all know, in a lot of companies, we have historically grown SAP systems. So like Andre said, the iceberg, there's software complexity in the iceberg from the functional part of you, from data, from interface, from technology. and of course, you heard SAP is changing from a more monolithic architecture, this ECC world, to a more cloud-based architecture. So we have processes that are not covered in one system, but all these processes lead to cache and all the other ones are across processes. And these IT systems who will support these processes is not only SAP-based in the future and not only classical SAP applications, but could also be partner applications, SaaS applications. So the idea is really SAP was complex in the past and will even be more complex, more variations, more ideas in the future. So managing this with processes, with enterprise architecture becomes more and more important. So all the ideas Andre said, I think, will be in the future in the next 5, 10, 15 years even more important than they were in the past. Of course, for processes, you will have Signavio at the top for managing processes, getting insights into processes. And you have, of course, Lina X enterprise architecture in the middle as, as glue between the process and be between technical world. And more and more important for BTP and cloud applications will be cloud ALM in the future. So what we really believe, that's not only a replacement of solution manager with one different tool, but there will become integrations and, and a mix of tools of best of uh, best of the uh, both worlds, so Elena X, Cloud ILM, and uh, and also Signavio to manage these transformations in a more cloud, more more complex world. 
So it's not one tool, but a mix of tools. And all these tools, of course, have to be they have to be integrated. And there, we are working together for months or a year already. So last June, we had a hack to build event and started with integrating Lina X BTP for integrations. And this idea, we want to continuously grow and expand. So beginning with integration, so interfaces that are implemented in the integration suite will then be covered also with BTP, with cloud setup sub-account structure to really then automatically import data to Linux, but not only technically import, but more transfer it in the middle. So there is some, for example, architect, interface architect or whatever, who is then checking the technical data transforming it, filter it, and bring it to Lina X, so that these two worlds come together, that you don't have this great effort to enter data, to check data, so that the data quality will be covered by integration, that the integration and the, the stuff will be done in PTP, and all the enterprise architecture data will then be in Lina X that you can manage for your transformations. And how that could work, also with a short demonstration of Lina X, the RISE context and the integration, I would like to show you in a demo in a moment. I would like to start with a meta model of Lina X. So the heart of the meta model is, of course, applications and data architecture, where the applications and data objects and interfaces are. At the bottom, you have the technical architecture, where you have provider, IT components, tech category. But what's important, more important in the past, but also tech components are used in uh, also with SaaS applications. Then you have the business architecture with organizations, business capabilities, and business context mainly imported processes, for example, in order to cash from Linux. At the top level, you have ob objectives, what you want to achieve with your transformations. You have platforms like BTP, and we have initiatives, so your projects transforming from SS landschaft to target landschaft. So then, after describing the meta model, jump to Linux, where you have the inventory, the reports, the diagrams. The heart is the inventory where the data is submitted and you can use it in reports and diagrams. So first of all, search for some SAP systems or the finance system and say, and have, have a look what is then stored in Lina X for finance systems. So of course, you have a life cycle. And you have uh, now SAP FE and you use it not in fact, the different system in the future. You have relationship explorers. You see relations between other fact sheets, for example, in, this, in which countries the system is used. And then you have different aspects and attributes that you can submit for, for the FFE systems and for fact sheets and it, that can be standard ones and you can also adjust the values and really build your own fact sheet if you need other informations. For example, like you customize an SAP system, you can customize Linux. And you can not only submit informations, but also comment. So do collaboration, what's very important for Linux, submit different resources for head documents, for whatever concepts and also for, you know, for, for, for supporting reasons. And you can submit data not only by using Lina X, but also by surveys. And like we saw it for application, it's also the same for the other fact sheets. So all the other fact sheets are quite the same. You can submit values and you can search for everything. And when you submitted all these values, you can use them. And using is, of course, for, re for reports. The first report level is looking at the big picture at the, at the city and looking which applications are fine today and which, ap which applications are not fine. So of course, Lina X is fine. So it's technical fit and function fit is very, very powerful. So it's in the upper right corner. And when you look at the portfolio level, the next level is application landscape, where you really can look at your landscape coming from the capabilities, which applications are fulfilling the capabilities. And there's not a static view, but you can really focus on all the information that is stored there. It could be different values and you can have a viewpoint on this specific question you want to address. Next level could be roadmap reports. So when does this application come to life and where perhaps where are they phased out? And there you can say, and it can group it by year. And also here you can use other informations you stored. So if you don't only have one static level, but you can have a really dynamic report. And the last one, very important, is the so-called circle map, where you see all the integrations, which systems are talking with other systems and which data are coming from a system A to a system B. These are sometimes very complex, so you then can filter, okay, I'm only interested in SAP interfaces, so our finance system is talking to a different, so to some different other systems. And now moving from there to how to use Lina X with RISE. So RISE, of course, in the preparing discovery phase, you can have a look at your SS landscape with different questions. How are capabilities solved? What applications do you have? How do they integrate it? What they saw before? And you can really also have a deep look with this data flow report 
and really check out your integration. So next level is then explore and realize. And there are different questions. So you can have a look on your on your projects. What are your work streams? For example, in our work streams, it is HR, it is, uh, for example, but also other work streams. And what are the applications that are coming with the, with the realized phase? They are added and also which application will be better in the future. And you can have a look on your migration stuff and always like for, for your reports from the down left level to the upper right level, it should be more, more powerful in the future. And you can also have a look again on integrations, what integrations are there, what are coming and what will be phased out. And the next report level is then you deploy applications and you want to see are your ideas of the project then be in place in the future? So you wanted to have a better architecture, of course, with your transformation. And now you can see execute this transformation to then it will be stored to the Lina X fact sheets. And you can also have metrics information to really check if your architecture is working like you want it to be it. So not only ending after realize, but also the deploy phase. And what we then did is creating an app to then really get the data from DTP to Lina X in a smoothly way. So what we did, did before or what, we, what is the, the starting point, importing all the data from Lina X, grabbing all the data from BTP, so cloud integration for now, but in the future, all the API event mesh and BTP data, and then create information that is useful for an enterprise architect and for key users. So we're just creating a simple interface in this demo, the tech -ad demo data. The receiver will be then an SAP BI system, and the data is coming from our final system we recently checked. And we say, okay, it's for a demo process and we, we select an object to use cost center. And that is the data that can be used in Lina X. But the important part is how is this implemented in integration suite? And that will be the next step. So we'll have a look at our recently created interface and check what are the technically iFlows in this case who implement this interface. This we then can store this information again to Lina X and not use only technical information Lina X but a really high level key user approach or enterprise architecture level and transform it automatically with the technical information. So we set it to ready and then the interface grabs the data, puts it to Lina X and links the technical information there. So now we will have a quick check and go against the fact checked interface. Check it here if we found our interface or find our interface there and check again for tech ad demo. And then we will see that the Already the interface is created in Lina X and then we can have the data there. And now it's automatically zoomed. If there are changes, the changes will be automatically in Lina X and you don't have to do it twice again and again so that the data quality and data speed submitting will be much more powerful than, uh, powerful than doing it evidently in Lina X and also in BTP. Thanks a lot for joining our session, Navigating s 400 Transformations in Lina X. And also Andre, very much thanks for giving us the story, giving us the idea. I hope you enjoyed the demo. It gave you a first idea how to use Lina X for supporting your transformations. And now you can take action, perhaps check the blogs, check Lina X information, and do your trial on your own to really find out how Lina X will support your transformations to S4HANA and BTP. Yeah, thank you from my side as well. So as I said, I wish you all an exciting tech ad this year. Uh, for me, it's been great to be part of it for the first time. Looking forward to be part of the ecosystem of SAP. Thank you so much.